In this tutorial, I am going to walk through building a tank game. Pow pow! As hopefully you can see behind me right now. We're going to get into the movement, shooting, missiles, dangerous robots, explosions, you know, the important stuff. I think it's fun. I mean, it is fun. And hopefully you'll learn a lot. Also, at the end, you'll be able to really make this your own, build out the game, add levels, all sorts of stuff. So make sure you comment below with questions, concerns, or funny jokes. All of the assets and all of that stuff, the code, it is in the description linked down there. And yeah, let's get going. And here we are. This is Unity. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to click on 2D because, well, it's a 2D game. And I'm going to creatively name mine. At least I think so. Above the fray. I'll say video so I know what this is. And perfect. Create. And here we are. All right. So first things first, let me take a look at the main camera. I think this will be all right. I do want to make sure in game, I, instead of free aspect, I'm going to set mine up to be a 4-2, kind of like a classic uh, Game Boy game. So that's looking great. Next up, we're going to add the sprites that we're going to use. Now, all of these are linked in the description. They are public domain, well, Creative Commons Zero, so they are free to use and have fun with. Don't worry, mine should yet be hidden down here somewhere. And this is my sprites folder, but what I'm looking for is Super Power Assets Pack. There's a ton in here. These guys are great. They're completely free. You should look them up. But what we're interested in right now is a top-down shooter. So I'm going to just drag that in here. Awesome. While I'm at it too, I should, um, some fonts. I should have some fonts, game assets, and these will be linked in the description. Here they are. Drag these in as well. Great. And don't need that. Let's get this back to size. I'm going to rename this sprites because it's all of our sprites. And this is looking awesome. So what we're going to want to do is build a bit of a background. To do that, if we go into our sprites, we'll notice they even have a background folder. Perfect. What we need. And here is what we have. It's actually a tile set, which is fine, which is great. It gives us the ability to customize. Let me go ahead then. We're going to want to change this to multiple. And then we want to do sprite editor. And before I forget, we're probably going to do 16 pixels per unit. So let me change that up. Up, oh, yeah, and apply all this. All right. Now let's go slice, grid by cell size, and I know the size, it's 16 by 16, slice. And here we are. All the way around, everything's diced up nicely for us. Let's go ahead and apply. Great, so that should be ready to rock, and that's why we set this to 16. Now we need a few things. So I'm gonna actually go back into our assets folder, I'm gonna make a new folder, I sometimes do this in sprites, but really we should put it out here. I'm going to say tile set or tile sets, but we're just going to have one. And then I'm going to go into this folder just to be fancy and organized and make a folder called ground. All right. With that done, we need to go up here to window 2D tile palette. And here's mine. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of stick this right here. Right. And then I'm going to do create new. I'm going to call my tile palette ground palette. Create. It's going to ask me where. Well, thankfully, we have a folder for that ground. Now it needs the images so I can head back to sprites. I can drop into backgrounds here and I can just grab it and let go. And where do I want it? Well, no, 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 not in background. Let's go all the way back here. Assets, tile sets, ground is where I want all this. And it's dividing up the tiles. And here we are. To add tiles, we need, well, a tile set or a grid. It's going to add the same thing for this. Oops. 2D object, tile map. I meant a tile map. Um, tile map. Let me click on it here. Okay, this is looking good. Now we can pick the objects that we would like. I'm going to zoom in using the mouse wheel. 
And I can kind of see if I pick the edge, there's going to be a crease on it, right? So I could do that, but I might only want to do it here. Right at the edge when there's probably no point. You can also, and what I should have done, is use this tool, which lets you drag and draw more than one block at a time. So I want more of this, I'm thinking. So I'm just going to go zoop. Let's go ahead and look at the game screen. making sure, Yeah, I'm looking how that looks. Okay. And then I was going to put something a little different at the back. Maybe some of this, like it's a nice plaza. I'm liking that. And then probably some stairs. Let's get a different color. Do these guys, probably just one. Mm. That doesn't look like a stair, so I'm going to just take the center part of it. That's better. Ooh, and how about some grates? I'm going to uh, throw one here. I guess you really don't throw a grate. That could be a teeny bit dangerous. <laughs> Put one here and maybe one back up here. Okay. And just to give it a bit more color, let's see. I'm going to use, I have no idea what this is, but sure. One of these over here. Let's check the game screen. Oh, yeah, this stuff's on screen. Great. And I don't know, a panel. And maybe a few of these over here, like there was some construction issue. Yeah, and I'm really liking how this is perfect. Well, I'm actually good with that. So there are is a quick tile map, a quick grid system for us. So I'm going to go ahead and close this tab. I won't need it. And awesome. And grid, yeah, that's fine. I could rename this background grid, maybe. All right, now let's start adding our sprites. So up over here, sprites and characters. Okay. Now, again, keep in mind, all of these assets are in the description. This tank is superpower assets. It's in the description. It's what we're going to be using. We're going to be using both of these pieces so we can move the tank's head separately. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my tank and just drop it in here and it's going to disappear. Oh, because I didn't drop it apparently. There we are. Now let's make sure it's on top of everything. So I'm going to add a tag that's going to say player or you could say tank or anything you want it to be. And then I'm going to say tank for the title of this. And the size, let's say three times. I want a larger tank here. And let's go ahead, grab this. Ah, yes, we need to apply. Oh, let's add a sorting layer too. It's getting ahead of myself. Uh, player. There we are. And I want to rotate this. So I'm going to do 90. Yes, because that way they're going to be approaching the oh, whoops, negative 90, kind of approaching this area. Bump of rum and probably zero for X and negative um, three or so for Y. And with the base in place, what comes next? The cannon. Watch out. All right. And I am just going to name this cannon. You like a camera company. Um, anyways, and let's do three and three for that. And for X, zero sounds great. Default layer to player. Order one so it's above the base of the tank. And Y, I'm not actually sure. Something like that. So negative three. Oh, it's because with the center point. Okay. What we need to do on the cannon is to make sure and um, let's actually do a few things. I'm going to go ahead and have the cannons default be so on a Mac if I or I'm on a Windows machine. But if I double click this, it's going to launch me into the photo editor. 
And all I'm doing here is I'm just going to flip it so it's like this. It makes my life a bit easier. So that's it. That's all I did. And then I'm going to close it and it's going to update there. Great. Now in Unity, what I want to do is go into Sprite Editor. Okay. And this is its pivot point. So you would want the cannon to pivot around the center of this object, not the uh, entire thing, because that would be, well, that's not the center of gravity. It would be really strange for it to rotate there. You would want it to use the gears underneath the center. So to do that, to make sure it pivots like that, and this is its center point, we would need to put this in the center. And that looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to hit apply and X. And now I might need to make some adjustments here, such as pulling this guy back. Click off. Yes. And I'm actually just going to keep these two together. So I'm going to drag my cannon and make it part of my tank. That is looking great. You can play with the size of the cannon. You could stretch it longer or shorter, or I didn't mean to. I actually made one with a smaller diameter and had m even more than one gun on the sides. Regardless, we have our cannon. So what's next? Well, we're going to want it to follow the mouse and it's, it's not. So to be make, to make that happen on the cannon itself, I'm going to just go add component and do camera, camera, yikes, Canon script. I like to put script at the end because it makes sure I can differentiate and know uh, which is which when I'm just dropping in names and titles. So camera script is what we're going to be making new or Canon script and hit create. Now let's do a bit of cleanup here because that's just going to appear right here. And let's go ahead and create a folder script scripts and dragon can script and boom here we are a beautiful blank page let's go ahead and see i'm going to shrink this down and shrink this down something like that okay so what do we need to add here well First off, we want to know the angle that the item is when it starts. We're not going to need start, actually, but we're going to need a few variables. So private vector 3 Z angle. And since it is a 2D game, we are going to be worried about the Z axis because well, look, if I go over here, Z right now is 90. What if it's 5? That's what's actually going to be turning our object. OK, so Z angle, because, well, I should X and Y for this are going to be up and down eight. We're not going to see it because we're looking straight on it flat. All right. So we need the Z angle and then we're going to need a public float for uh, conversion purposes. Public flow. Well, I guess it doesn't need to be public. Uh, and just make set that to one. All right. So now, now that we have this vector three set up and this Z angle, the Z angle is going to be changing constantly because we're going to be setting this equal to our mouse's Z angle. And how we, how we do that will be, first we need a Z angle or a vector three specific for a mouse. Vector three, I'm just going to call it mouse position, keep things clear. And how do we determine that? Well, we're going to use our camera dot main dot screen to world point to world point and then what do we want well input mouse position and a semicolon what this is doing screen to world point it is taking a well it's taking a position on the screen on the viewable screen that the player is using and depending on your coordinate grid, depending on your canvas, depending on how you have set up the screen, it's making that position be applicable be a, uh, to the world, to the world that you have created. Okay, So it's a bit convoluted, but it's what we need. Now, after we have this mouse's position, what do we want? We want mouse position dot Z to be equal to zero F because we do not want that impacting our object, our cannon. 
Now, to make the gun follow the mouse, I'm just going to put some comments here. Gun follows the mouse. Okay. And then what we're going to use is a vector three again. Aim, direction. And what's our direction going to be? Well, that's going to be the mouse position minus the transform dot position dot normalized. And normalizing something is to a vector would be keeping its same direction, but it's just setting its length to the ray length to one. That's what normalize was, if you're curious. All right. And now the angle. So what we're going to be doing with that is we set angle up above as private, and now we're going to change it up. Angle is going to be equal to math f atom two. And then aim direction dot y comma aim direction dot x. And then we're going to multiply all of this by math f. So what this is going to be doing, uh, atom two is the angle in radians between x axis and the ray. So how kind of how much of an angle it is going to be. And then we multiply it by math f radian to degree to convert that into degrees. I'm subtracting 90 because the position of our cannon. And then what we're going to be doing is, well, let me, I can throw in some comments real quick. Okay. And up next, we're going to be using our z angle variable. And so what we do there is we zero out X, we zeroed out, out Y because we're not worried about that. Again, we're turning on the Z axis and we're setting equal to this angle that we got through add in two, which is again, it's the distance between the uh, in radians, the it's going to be the angle from the positive X axis to the endpoint X, Y of the ray. So that's what we're going to be needing to use to transform your angles, Z angle. And the concept of Euler's angle being there are, well, there's three axes, right? Left, right, left, right, up, down, and then side to side, if you will. That's a pretty crude explanation, but you get the idea. Let me get rid of that. I've put in one comment real quick, just to clarify. Something like that. And let's make sure to save all of this. And, oh, that's... Definitely not what I wanted. And over here, let's give it a test. Yeah. And notice our gun is following our mouse. Right? Our cannon is rocking it. Awesome. Now that we can move our cannon around in the next portion of this series, let's dive into having the cursor become a sight like it is on a weapon, such as a tank, and get into being able to shoot a projectile, missile, bullet, whatever you think tank should be shooting. And again, make sure if you have a comment, concern, or want to show off something awesome you built to, well, comment below.